즉 भारत की महामहिम राष्ट्रपति श्रीमती द्रौपदी मुर्मू जी का हार्दिक स्वागत नमस्कार और सुप्रभात देवी और सज्जनों हमारी मुख्य अतिथि भारत की महामहिम राष्ट्रपति श्रीमती द्रौपदी मुर्मू जी का 
ऊर्जा दक्षता ब्यूरो विद्युत मंत्रालय द्वारा आयोजित राष्ट्रीय ऊर्जा संरक्षण पुरस्कार वितरण के भव्य समारोह में हार्दिक स्वागत है इस अवसर पर श्री आर के सिंह जी केंद्रीय विद्युत नवीन और नवीकरणीय ऊर्जा मंत्री श्री कृष्णपाल विद्युत और भारी उद्योग राज्य मंत्री श्री आलोक कुमार सचिव भारत सरकार विद्युत मंत्रालय तथा श्री अभय बाकरे महानिदेशक ऊर्जा दक्षता ब्यूरो हम आप सभी का हार्दिक स्वागत करते हैं वी ऑल्सो एक्सटेंड आर वॉम वेलकम टू सीनियर ऑफिशियल्स फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट मेंबर्स फ्रॉम मल्टा इलेक्ट्रल एंड बायोलेट्रल ऑर्गेनाइजेशन इंडिया फ्यूचर यंग स्कूल चिल्ड्रन टीचर्स एंड पेरेंट्स हु हैव ज्वाइंट अस फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द कंट्री आई एम ऑल्सो डिलाइटेड टू वेलकम द इंडस्ट्री लीडर्स फ्रॉम वेरियस सेक्टर्स एंड आर इनोवेटर्स अब मैं स्वागत भाषण के लिए विद्युत मंत्रालय भारत सरकार के सचिव श्री आलोक कुमार जी को आमंत्रित करती हूँ Your Excellency, Honorable President of India, Honorable Minister Shri R K Singh Ji, Honorable Minister of State Shri Krishn Pal Singh Ji, distinguished delegates, senior officers of Government of India, heads of Central Public Sector Undertakings, DG Bureau of Energy Efficiency, CEOs and executives of industries, organizations. and state governments members of media ladies and gentlemen a very good morning to all of you it's a pride moment for all of us as we celebrate 32nd national energy conservation day 2022 it's my proud privilege to welcome you all on behalf of ministry power on this great occasion the growth of any economy depends upon the availability of affordable energy sources remarkable progress has been witnessed in the field of industry agriculture communication transport and other service sectors india has had also been addressing the challenge of meeting the growing demand of energy which is now more than 600 million tons of oil equivalent in a year and it is expected to be doubled by year 2040 sustainability and climate change are increasingly attracting global attention therefore we also fully recognize the efforts required to fight climate change and pursue sustainable development collaboration with various stakeholders including the international community is indispensable for success in this endeavor india has taken over presidency of g20 and the theme is vasudev kutumbakam one earth one family one future the message is loud and clear that humanity needs to strive for just and equitable growth for all in the world india has made impressive progress by accelerating the ongoing energy efficiency programs and bringing in new initiatives these programs have gathered unprecedented momentum and the states have also come forward to implement and disseminate various energy efficiency program in recent years energy efficiency also contributes in achieving the sustainable development goal sdg 7 aims to ensure access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy for all one of the targets under this goal is to double the global rate of energy efficiency improvement by 2030 the spill over effects of energy efficiency also contribute towards achieving other sdgs promoting energy efficiency is going to assist us not only in enhancing energy access but also in reducing our import dependence bringing down the energy cost for the consumers as well as increasing energy productivity leading to energy security for the country india is among the few countries in the world to publish a cooling action plan with a long term vision to take care of cooling requirements across sectors i am delighted to share a fact with you that the 44 448 participating units and other establishment in national energy conservation awards this year 
have collectively been collectively been able to achieve savings of more than rupees 1500 crore and avoided capacity generation of more than 370 megawatt this demonstrates the huge energy potential and the saving potential which can be tapped if all our industrial units and establishments adopt the schemes for energy efficiency my special appreciation to school children for their enthusiasm and engagement in the painting competition i congratulate all the winners of 32nd national energy conservation awards 2022 and second energy national energy efficiency innovation award 2022 jai hind धन्यवाद महोदय श्री आर के सिंह जी से अनुरोध है कि शॉल भेंट कर महामहिम राष्ट्रपति महोदया का स्वागत और अभिनंदन करें जोरदार तालियों से स्वागत नाउ वी इन्वाइट कुमारी बनास्मिता कश्यप द विनर ऑफ ग्रुप बी नेशनल लेवल पेंटिंग कंपटीशन, टू फेलिसिटेट मैडम प्रेसिडेंट बाय प्रेजेंटिंग हर विद अ मोमेंटो Thank you. For centuries, India has lived in unison with Mother Nature. The cultural cycle of India is synchronous with the natural cycles. With the advent of modern technology and industrialization, there has been a drastic change in the lifestyle of people. Our Honorable Prime Minister, has reminded the urgency of living in tandem with nature and unveiled life concept, lifestyle for environment as a mission towards net zero. Presenting this concept, we shall have a screening of the short film on energy conservation, India's success story towards life mission. Climate change per इस वैश्विक मंथन के बीच मैं भारत की ओर से इस चुनौती से निपटने के लिए पांच अमृत तत्व रखना चाहता हूं एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द ग्लोबल एनर्जी ट्रांजिशन कंट्रीज आर मेकिंग एफर्ट्स टू मिटिगेट द इफेक्ट्स ऑफ क्लाइमेट चेंज विद द रिन्यूड फोकस ऑन क्लीन एनर्जी एंड एनर्जी कॉन्जर्वेशन The last eight years have witnessed a rapid transition towards renewable sources of energy. India has had the fastest growth rate in renewable energy capacity addition among large economies. In our NDCs announced in COP21 in Paris, we had pledged that by 2030, 40% of our power generation capacity will be from non-fossil fuel sources. We achieved this in November 21. A good nine years ahead of schedule. Under the mandate given in EC Act 2001, several innovative energy efficiency national programs have been successfully designed and implemented by Ministry of Power. For the large industries from energy intensive sectors, perform, achieve and trade or track program have now covered more than 1,100 industrial units. The program has saved energy worth rupees 40,000 crore annually and about 105 million ton of CO2 emissions have been avoided annually. Standards and labeling program, popularly known as star rating for energy efficient household appliances have resulted in over 60 billion units of electricity savings per year and avoided 50 million tons of CO2 emissions annually. The Ujala program launched in 2015 has led to deployment of over 150 crore LED lamps 
resulting in substantial electricity savings while reducing carbon dioxide emissions of about 100 million tons of CO2 annually. The energy conservation efforts in the building sector are also being accelerated. BEE has formulated Energy Conservation Building Codes or ECBC to improve the energy efficiency in new commercial buildings. Similarly, for residential sector, the launch of Econivas Sanghita has offered new opportunities for savings of energy in homes. The overall impact of energy efficiency schemes have been huge. The total energy cost savings has been Rs 1.5 lakh crore annually along with annual CO2 emission reduction of 267 million ton. The traditional Indian lifestyle has been environment friendly and therefore India is always on the forefront in saving environment and leading the pathways for the world to adopt to lifestyle for environment, that is life. Climate change mein lifestyle ki ek bahut badi bhoomi ka hai. Aaj jarurat hai ki hum sabhi loog ek saath aakar lifestyle for environment yani life ko ek abhyan ki tarah aage badhaye. In keeping with the global launch of Honorable Prime Minister's life, this will ensure that every citizen joins life to make it a mass movement. During the period of our G20 presidency, the energy transition efforts made by India will be leading the world towards a sustainable growth for our planet. Let's take a pledge on Energy Conservation Day to conserve energy and reaffirm our commitment to Mother Nature. This was quite insightful, illustrating the importance of energy conservation in life mission. Electric vehicles are the future for sustainable mobility mode. As we today have petrol stations around, similarly, charging stations at desirable locations would play a vital role for creating an ecosystem for EVs. The EV Yatra web portal and mobile app are aimed at creating awareness among the EV users and masses at large to promote e-mobility in the country. May I now request Honorable President to unveil EV Yatra web portal for the citizens of the country. More about this portal is available in this video clip. विद्युत मंत्रालय भारत सरकार के मार्गदर्शन में ऊर्जा दक्षता ब्यूरो यानी बीईई ने इलेक्ट्रिक वाहनों के सार्वजनिक ईवी चार्जिंग स्टेशनों के लिए वेब पोर्टल और मोबाइल ऐप बनाया है ईवी यात्रा नाम के इस पोर्टल को www.evyatra.beeindia.gov.in द्वारा उपयोग किया जा सकता है ईवी यात्रा पोर्टल और मोबाइल ऐप का उद्देश्य देश में ई मोबिलिटी की जागरूकता पैदा करना है ताकि लोग अधिक से अधिक इलेक्ट्रिक वाहनों का प्रयोग कर सके ईवी यात्रा पोर्टल और मोबाइल ऐप देश भर में उपलब्ध सार्वजनिक चार्जिंग स्टेशनों के स्थान संख्या सहित वहां उपलब्ध चार्जिंग पॉइंट्स की भी जानकारी देगा इस ईवी यात्रा पोर्टल और मोबाइल ऐप की मदद से उपभोक्ता अपने निकटतम सार्वजनिक ईवी चार्जर और चार्जिंग कनेक्टर तक आसानी से पहुंच सकेंगे इसके अतिरिक्त ईवी यात्रा पोर्टल पर ई मोबिलिटी को आगे बढ़ाने के लिए और भी कई जानकारियां मौजूद हैं यही नहीं पेट्रोल डीजल और सीएनजी गाड़ियों की खरीद से लेकर ईंधन खर्च की तुलना इलेक्ट्रिक वाहनों से करने की सुविधा भी उपलब्ध है ये पोर्टल देश भर में भारत सरकार द्वारा शुरू किए गए गो इलेक्ट्रिक अभियान के विभिन्न कार्यक्रमों की एक झलक प्रदान करता है जिससे ज्यादा से ज्यादा लोग ईवी के लिए अग्रसर हों। आज से ईवी यात्रा मोबाइल ऐप को सभी स्मार्टफोन्स के द्वारा डाउनलोड किया जा सकता है आइए इस मोबाइल ऐप पर रजिस्टर करें और देश भर में बिना किसी फिक्र के कहीं भी और कभी भी अपना ईवी वाहन चलाए तो अब और देरी न करें और ऊर्जा संरक्षण के साथ एक शून्य उत्सर्जन यात्रा की शुरुआत करें लेट्स बिगिन Zero Emission Journey. Go Electric. 
अब मैं श्री आर के सिंह जी माननीय केंद्रीय मंत्री विद्युत नवीन और नवीकरणीय ऊर्जा मंत्रालय को सभा को संबोधित करने के लिए आमंत्रित करती हूँ ऑनरेबल प्रेसिडेंट मैप श्री कृष्ण पाल गुजर जी मिनिस्टर ऑफ स्टेट फॉर पावर श्री आलोक कुमार सेक्रेटरी पावर मिनिस्टर्स फ्रॉम स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स एम्बेसडर्स एंड डेलीगेट्स फ्रॉम ओवरसीज मिशन सीनियर ऑफिसर्स फ्रॉम द सेंट्रल एंड द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट द सी एम डीज ऑफ सी पी एस यूज एंड अदर ऑफिसर्स इंडस्ट्री चैंपियंस एक्सपर्ट्स मीडिया पर्सनस लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन एंड मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट चिल्ड्रेन गुड मॉर्निंग एंड वेलकम We have gathered here today to partake in the National Energy Conservation Day 22, and to remind ourselves, as we remind the world, that energy conservation and climate action are inextricably linked, not just with each other, but with our lives and the society as well. Today, India's contribution to energy transition and the exp. growth of renewable energy capacity at the national level needs no elaboration as a nation we have achieved within a short period of time what the developed world around us took decades to achieve this is evident from the quantum of renewable energy that is being generated and used and the fulfillment of our nationally determined con contribution commitments ahead of the timelines and our unwavering resolve to build work energy conservation measures in every walk of life madam president i would like to present before you some of the notable measures that have been undertaken by the ministry of power and the bureau of energy efficiency the demand side management of power consumption through the use of energy efficient appliances this includes the use of energy efficient led lighting under the ujala scheme the agricultural pumps the ceiling fans and air conditioners all this has resulted in a reduction of co2 emissions of almost 100 million tons per annum a decade of perform achieve and trade scheme for energy intensive industries this has resulted in the reduction of carbon dioxide emissions to the tune of 106 million tons per annum this cover this scheme covers about 1196 units across 13 different sectors at present the standards and labeling scheme for domestic appliances that help consumers to make informed choices about power consumption and savings this program has resulted in savings of about 60 billion units of electricity annually and a reduction of co2 emissions by 50 million tons per year the scheme presently covers 30 appliances and is going to be extended to cover more appliances in future madam president in cop 21 in paris we had pledged that by 2030 we shall reduce the emissions intensity of our economy by 30 to 35% 33 to 35% as compared to 2005 levels madam president i am happy to inform you that we have already reduced the, the emissions intensity for our economy by more than 30% already and we are a good 8 years away from our target date we shall cross that target well in time Madam President we have taken major steps for energy efficiency improvements in the construction center construction sector that sector the housing sector the building sector accounts for almost 24% of our electricity consumption of our energy consumption we put in place the energy conservation building code which the presentation of which you saw and the eco nivas sanstha both will cover commercial buildings as well as residential buildings and these lay down 
the steps to be taken in construction so as to reduce the energy intensity of buildings, so as to move towards green buildings. That's what the ECBC and the Ekonivas Sahita are about, for movement towards green buildings. Now these are, be, they have been, the ECBC has been adopted by 22 states. They have made it a part of their building bylaws. And similarly, the next step, now that the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill has been passed, we will come out with a code for residential buildings. So right now, it's voluntary, the Ekonivas Sahita. Now it will be made compulsory. And that will again be made a part of the building bylaw, so that future buildings, that the large buildings, and buildings which have a connected load of more than 100 kilowatts, not the small buildings, the large buildings will have to abide by the energy efficiency norms, and thereby will further make our buildings more green and more efficient. Um, Honorable President, Madam, the passing of the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill in the parliament a couple of days back enables the government among other measures to establish a carbon trading mechanism and prescribe minimum percentages of non-fossil fuels to be used for consumption. This is expected to further encourage energy savings and further reduce emissions as well as energy costs. This is expected to create a robust carbon market that will incentivize the shift to clean fuels. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Prime Minister of India had announced two landmark interventions at COP26 in Glasgow. One was the Panchamrit, by which India will aim to reduce the emissions intensity of its GDP by 45% by 2030, compared to the 2005 levels. Now, this is uh, an extension, this is an expansion of our ambition. Earlier we had pledged that we will reduce the emissions intensity of our economy by 33 to 35 percent. Now because we are very close to achieving that goal eight years ahead of time, therefore we have upped our ambition and now by 2030 we will reduce the emissions intensity of our economy by 45 percent. We have upped our ambition by more than 10 percent. And this despite the fact that our per capita emissions are one third of the global average. Our per capita emissions are one third of the global average. And despite that, we have, we have already reduced the emissions intensity by 30% and we shall reduce it by 45% by 2030. Now that is the scale of our ambition. And that is our commitment to the environment. That is our country's commitment to the environment. The uh, other initiative announced by the Honorable Prime Minister was life, the lifestyle for environment. Uh, Honorable President, my, Mahatma Gandhi had said that there is enough in this world and the, the earth provides us enough for our needs. There's enough for our need, but not enough for our greed. Now that is very true. That is something which is being demonstrated now with the deteriorating environment. And one of the reasons for the deteriorating environment is our untrammeled hunger for consumption, which leads to greater consumption of energy than required and therefore more emissions. Now, life is something which goes back to what Mahatma Gandhi said, that there is enough for our need, not enough for our greed. And therefore, we have to tailor our lifestyle to make, uh, to make this earth sustainable to protect our environment. This requires a collective effort. The environment cannot be protected by efforts of government alone. Every citizen has to contribute by making small changes to the way we live our everyday lives. Every tiny step we take, we, trans we can transform our environment for the better. That is the mission life. Our President, Madam, India has emerged as a leader in energy transition. We had pledged in our NDCs that by 2030, 40% of our power generation capacity will come from non-fossil sources. We achieved that a good eight years in advance. We were already at 42%. Today, 42% of our power generation capacity is non-fossil. That is non-emitting. It does not emit any carbon dioxide. 
and no other country has transitioned at this rate, at the rate at which we have. Madam President, we are continuing with our objective. Now, because we have achieved, we achieved our NDC goal eight years in advance, therefore, in COP26, again, we expanded our goal. We had set 40% by 2030. Now, we have upped it to 50% by 2030. So, by 2030, 50% of our capacity will come from non-fossil fuel sources. By 2030, our total established capacity will be about 850 gigawatts. So half of that, 425 gigawatts, will come from non-fossil. In fact, we shall reach more than 500 gigawatts coming from non-fossil fuel sources. Now, that is the scale. That is the scale of ambition which we have, and that is what makes India a world leader in climate action. The fact that we are transitioning as far as energy generation, power generation is concerned, our energy production systems are concerned, and the fact that we are reducing the emissions intention, intensity of our economy. As we celebrate this energy conservation, there is one more point. I mean, we have, as I said, we have not slackened our efforts. Uh, last year, we added 14,000 plus megawatts of capacity. This year we have already added renewable energy capacity. This year we have already added 12,000 megawatts of renewable energy capacity. And we shall cross what we did last year. So the, our pace of energy transition is going to accelerate, if anything. And uh, uh, Madam President, the change now is that more and more of our energy transition actions are based on made in India production. We are making our cells and modules here. Most of our uh, wind power turbines, etc., are made here, 80 percent almost. So th more and more it is made in India, and we will continue in that direction. As we celebrate this Energy Conservation Day, I would like to exhort each one of you, the students, the academia, professionals, policy makers, to make energy conservation and to make life lifestyle for environment, an integral part of your lives. By saving a single unit of electricity, you are not only channeling it to a more deserving place, but you are also reducing emissions and safeguarding the environment. This is what will make our Earth, our only planet, sustainable. I would like to express my sincere congratulations to the award winners and uh, from various industries who have pioneered initiatives in the field of en energy conservation and energy efficiency. I am also particularly delighted to see the participation of the school children who have not only participated in the fun painting con competitions on energy conservation and have also shown to us, as we saw, <coughs> Madam President, when you were taking a round of the paintings, as to how aware our children are about the need for energy conservation. I would like to congratulate the Bureau of Energy Efficiency and the Ministry of Power, along with all the stakeholders, who are constantly collaborating and working together for greater synergy in the field of energy transition. Through our collective efforts, the vision for a cleaner and more sustainable planet will become a reality in our lifetime. Thank you, Madam President. धन्यवाद माननीय आपके शब्द वास्तव में प्रेरणादायक हैं देवियों सजनों अब हमारे पास वह पुरस्कार हैं जिनका आप सबको इंतजार है शुरुआत में पहले भाग के पुरस्कार प्रदान किए जाएंगे द ब्यूरो ऑफ एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी अंडर द मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ पावर ऑर्गेनाइजेस नेशनल लेवल पेंटिंग कंपटीशन ऑन एनर्जी कंजर्वेशन बोथ एट स्टेट एंड नेशनल लेवल एवरी ईयर this year, this painting competition is also organized at international level. This year, the painting competition was on the theme, Life, Lifestyle for Environment. Aisa kaha jata hai ki bachche sala ke liye apne kaan band kar lete hain, lekin udharan ke liye apni aankhe khol lete hain. In pehloon ke madhyam se, desh ke yuvao ne sudhigri jeevan ke liye apni kalwa ko canvas par ukeera. ऊर्जा की बचत और इसके संरक्षण पर यह सबसे प्रभावी उदाहरण हो सकता है और अब मैं भारत की महामहिम राष्ट्रपति श्रीमती द्रौपदी मुर्मू जी से अनुरोध करती हूं 
कि वह कृपया राष्ट्रीय चित्रकला प्रतियोगिता के विजेताओं को पुरस्कार प्रदान करें under the group a of class 5th 6th and 7th standard student the first prize goes to bhavna singh of class 7th from acharya kulam haridwar uttarakhand many congratulations The second prize in the same category goes to Kazi Tasneem Begum of class 7th from Shishu Bihar Higher Secondary School Agartala Tripura. The third prize is awarded to Rajanya Saha of class 7th from Shishu Bihar Higher Secondary School Agartala Tripura. under the group b which comprises of 8th 9th and 10th standard students the first prize goes to banasmita kashyap of class 10th from guwahati public school guwahati assam the second prize goes to vidisha lenka of class 10th from dav public school bhubneshwar odisha the third prize goes to sandarya pandurang patel of class 9th from hira ram girls high school kolhapur maharashtra Many congratulations to all the students. For NECA 2022, BEES received 448 applications across five categories and 21 sectors, which reports cumulative energy savings of 2.02 million tons of oil equivalent and monetary savings of rupees 5,855 crores. May I request the honourable president to kindly present the Energy Conservation Awards sector wise to the winners of industries and establishments category. Starting with the chemical sector, the first prize is being awarded to UPL Limited Unit Two from Ankleshwar, Gujarat. Mr. Vikas Garg, Manufacturing Head, India, and Mr. Deepak Garg, Unit Head, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved thermal energy savings of 11,111.91 million kilocalories and electrical engineering savings of 10.5 million units in a year. In consumer goods sector, the first prize is being awarded to Tata Consumer Products Limited from Jalpaiguri, West Bengal. Mr. Vanit Kumar, Vice President, and Mr. Binod Kumar Sahu, Unit Head, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved electrical energy savings of 0.024 million units in a year. In manufacturing sector, the first prize is being awarded to Kirloskar Oil Engines Limited from Nashik, Maharashtra. Mr. Vinod Kumar Menon, Vice President, and Mr. Paresh Kumar A. Joshi, Plant Head. will receive the prize this unit has achieved thermal energy savings of 148.58 million kilocalories and electrical energy savings of 0.11 million units in a year in edible oil vanaspati sector the first prize is being awarded to marico limited from puducherry mr vinod s associate manager production and mr ravindra gopal chopade works head will receive the prize this unit has achieved savings of 
3,472.61 million kilocalories and electrical energy savings of 0.41 million units in a year. An integrated steel plant, the first prize is being awarded to Sale Roorkela Steel Plant from Roorkela, Odisha. Sri Atnu Bhomik, Director in Charge, and Parth Sarthi Sri Nivas Kanan, CGM END, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved thermal energy savings of 2,21,259 million kilocalories and electrical energy savings of 77.5 million units in a year. In textile sector, the first prize is being awarded to Zenitex from Surat, Gujarat. Mr. Viran Sudhir Bhai Desai, CEO, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved thermal energy savings of 2,785.56 million kilocalories and electrical energy savings of 0.44 million units in a year. In petrochemical sector, the first prize is being awarded to Kothari Petrochemicals Limited from Chennai, Tamil Nadu. Sri M. Rajavel, whole time director, and Sri P. Premapuriyan, vice president operations, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved thermal energy savings of 5,985.46 million kilocalories and electrical energy savings of 0.92 million units in a year. In sugar sector, the first prize is being awarded to Pony Sugars Erode Limited from Erode, Tamil Nadu. Mr. K. Yokanathan, President and CFO, and B. Chandrasekhar, Senior President, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved thermal energy savings of 1141.45 million kilocalories and electrical energy savings of 0.29 million units in a year. This was the achievers from industry sectors. Now we are moving to transport. In the railway stations category, the first prize goes to Kachigura Railway Station, South Central Railway. Sri P. D. Mishra, Principal Chief Electrical Engineer, and Sri Sharad Chandrayaan, Divisional Railway Manager, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved electrical energy savings of 0.16 million units in a year. <laughs> Under the buildings category, we have three subsectors. In government buildings, the first prize goes to Ajmer Group of Workshop Admin Building from Ajmer, Rajasthan. Sri Vijay Sharma, General Manager, and Sri Amitabh, Principal Chief Mechanical Engineer, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved electrical energy savings of 0 0.042 million units in a year. Now we move to College and Universities Buildings category. The first prize goes to Dayanand Science College from Latur, Maharashtra. Dr. Jay Prakash Shiv Prasad Dargat, Principal, and Dr. Lalit Venkatrao Thakre, Nodal Officer, will receive the prize. This unit has achieved electrical energy savings of 0 0.038 million units in a year. Now we move to another category, which is institutions. The state designated agencies will be awarded in this category. There are three recipients of the first prize. In group one, the first prize goes to Karnataka Renewable Energy Development Limited, the SD of Karnataka. Sri Kumar Nayak G, IAS, Additional Chief Secretary, Energy Department, and Sri K. P. Rudrapaya, Managing Director, will receive the prize. In Group 2, the first prize goes to Andhra Pradesh State Energy Conservation Mission, SDA of Andhra Pradesh. Sri Kaveti Vijayanand, Special Chief Secretary, Energy Department, and Sri Chandrasekhar Reddy, CEO, will receive the prize. In Group 3, the first prize goes to Chief Electrical Inspector-Cum-Advisor, Government of Assam, SD of Assam. 
Shri Neeraj Verma, IAS Principal Secretary to the Government of Assam, and Shri Nila Mani Sharma, Chief Electrical Inspector Come Advisor, Government of Assam, Power Electricity Department will receive the prize. Now we move to the appliances. In air conditioners category, Daikin Air Conditioning India Private Limited has bagged this award for their model number FTKM50 V16 plus RKM 50U V16U. Mr. Kavaljeet Java, Chairman and Managing Director, will receive the prize. In the ceilings fans category, Atom Bond Technologies Private Limited has backed this award for their model number Renesa 1200. Mr. Manoj Meena, Chief Executive Officer, and Mr. Siba Bata Das, Chief Operating Officer, will receive the prize. In refrigerator category, Higher India Appliances Private Limited has backed this award for their model number HRD1955. Mr. N.S. Satish, President, and Mr. Pankaj Chavla, Vice President, will receive the prize. In distribution transformers category, Shirdi Sai Electricals Limited has backed this award for their model number SSEL255S. Mr. N. Visveswara Reddy, Chairman and Managing Director, and Mr. Vamsi Reddy, Director, will receive the prize. In the pumps category, CRI Pumps Private Limited has backed this award for their model number Plano 104. Mr. G. Selvaraj, Joint Managing Director, and Mr. Sahitya Sondarajan, Director, will receive the prize. Congratulations. Now we will move to the National Energy Efficiency Innovation Awards. For these awards, 177 applications from four sectors were received. In industry sector, first prize goes to Encon Thermal Engineers Private Limited for the project Regenerative Burner. Mr. Vishwabandhu Mahindra, Founder and Chairman, and Mr. Puneet Mahindra, Director, will receive the prize. In transport sector, first prize goes to Vikram Sarabhai Space Center ISRO for their project Super Capitary, that is, hybrid capacitor battery for space transportation. Dr. S. A. Ellen Govan, scientist and deputy director, and Srimati S. Sujata, scientist head energy systems, will receive the prize. Thank you, Madam President and other dignitaries. Urja Dakshata or Urja Sandrakshan ko padhava dene me, schooli bachcho or udyogon ko yogdan ko saharne me or prasahit karne ke liye mahamahim mahodya ka dhanyavad. 
आपने लोगों की सेवा में अपने जीवन को समर्पित कर कर एक अनुकरणीय उदाहरण प्रस्तुत किया है ओडिशा के एक छोटे से गांव से राष्ट्रपति भवन तक की आपकी यात्रा लोगों की निरंतर सेवा के कारण ही है मैडम प्रेसिडेंट हैज ऑल्सो सर्व एज गवर्नर ऑफ झारखंड एंड हेल्ड वेरियस पोर्टफोलियोज इन दैबिनेट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ ओडिशा आपकी अध्यक्षता में फल फूल रहे भारत के सभी नागरिकों के लिए यह बहुत सम्मान की बात है इट इज माई प्रिविलेज टू इन्वाइट मैडम प्रेसिडेंट टू एड्रेस आर ऑडियंस राष्ट्रीय ऊर्जा संरक्षण दिवस समारोह में उपस्थित केंद्रीय विद्युत और नवीन एवं नवीकरणीय ऊर्जा मंत्री श्री आर के सिंह जी विद्युत और भारी उद्योग राज्य मंत्री श्री कृष्णपाल जी विभाग के सचिव श्री आलोक कुमार जी ब्यूरो ऑफ एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी के डायरेक्टर जनरल श्री अभय बाकरे जी गणमान्य अतिथियों देवियों सोजोनों तथा तो प्यारे बच्चों सबसे पहले मैं आज के सभी पुरस्कार विजेताओं को विशेषकर बच्चों को बहुत बहुत बधाई देती हूँ साथ ही अन्य सभी प्रतिभागियों की भी मैं सराहना करती हूँ मैं सभी देशवासियों को राष्ट्रीय ऊर्जा संरक्षण दिवस की बधाई देती हूँ और उनसे अनुरोध करती हूँ कि ऊर्जा संरक्षण के लिए अपना अधिक से अधिक योगदान दे मुझे बताया गया है कि ऊर्जा संरक्षण से जुड़े राष्ट्रीय चित्रकला प्रतियोगिता में लगभग अस्सी हजार विद्यार्थियों ने उत्साहपूर्वक भागीदारी की है बच्चे जो चित्र बनाते हैं उनमें सच्चाई होती है बच्चों को पुरस्कृत करने के साथ साथ उनसे हमें सीखना भी चाहिए आने वाली पीढ़ियों के लिए प्रदूषण से मुक्त पर्यावरण में सांस लेने प्रगति करने और स्वस्थ जीवन बिताने की परिस्थितियाँ सुनिश्चित करना हम सब की सर्वोच्च प्राथमिकता है हम सब जानते हैं कि महानगरों में प्रदूषण के कारण छोटे छोटे बच्चों को फपड़े और सांस लेने से जुड़ी समस्याओं का सामना करना पड़ रहा है साफ सुथरी हवा में सांस ले पाना एक न्यूनतम मानवाधिकार है पर्यावरण की रक्षा से ही अनेक मानवाधिकारों की रक्षा संभव हो सकेगी देवियों और सुजन क्लाइमेट चेंज और ग्लोबल वार्मिंग की चुनौतियों का सामना करने की संदर्भ में ऊर्जा संरक्षण वैश्विक प्राथमिकता भी है और हमारी राष्ट्रीय प्राथमिकता भी है यद्यपि भी भारत द्वारा किया जा रहा है प्रति व्यक्ति कार्बन उत्सर्जन और जीएचजी एमिशन वर्ल्ड एवरेज के एक तिहाई से भी कम है फिर भी एक जिम्मेदार देश के रूप में भारत पर्यावरण के क्षेत्र में अग्रणी योगदान दे रहे हैं नेतृत्व प्रदान कर रहे हैं सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट गोल्स के मानकों तथा तो पारिस एग्रीमेंट के तहत नवीकरण ऊर्जा क्षमता की अपनी कुछ प्रतिबद्धताओं को भारत ने नियत अवधि से पहले ही प्राप्त कर लिया है उसके बाद हमारे देश में अपने लिए उच्चतर लक्ष्य निर्धारित किए हैं इसके लिए देश के नेतृत्व की और सभी देशवासियों की मैं हृदय से सराहना करती हूँ ये उपलब्धियाँ नवीकरणीय ऊर्जा तथा तो नवीन ऊर्जा के क्षेत्र में चल रहे प्रयासों पारंपरिक ऊर्जा स्रोतों के सक्षम उत्पादन व उपयोग तथा तो ऊर्जा संरक्षण के लिए किए जा रहे कार्य के बल पर ही प्राप्त की जा सकी है ऊर्जा के क्षेत्र में विश्व स्तर पर भारत को गौरवशाली स्थिति प्रदान करने के सफल प्रयास के लिए केंद्रीय मंत्री आर के सिंह जी राज्य मंत्री 
कृष्णोपाल जी तथा तो उनकी टीम के सदस्यों की मैं हार्दिक सराहना करती हूँ मुझे पूरा विश्वास है कि आप सौ वर्ष 2030 तक तो के लिए तय किए गए नेशनली डिटर्मिंट कंट्रीब्यूशंस को अवश्य पूरा करेंगे और पर्यावरण के हित में भारत द्वारा श्रेष्ठ योगदान सुनिश्चित करेंगे देवियों और स्वजनों ऊर्जा क्षेत्र से जुड़े सभी लोग जानते हैं कि भारत ने कोप ट्वेंटी सिक्स में विश्व समुदाय से पर्यावरण अनुकूल जीवन शैली को अपनाने का अनुरोध करते हुए लाइफ स्टाइल फॉर इन्वायरमेंट अर्थात लाइफ का संदेश दिया था भारतीय संस्कृति और परंपरा में लोगों की जीवन शैली हमेशा लाइफ के उस संदेश के अनुरूप ही हो रही है प्रकृति का सम्मान करना प्राकृतिक सामग्री का अपव्यय न करना और प्राकृतिक संबंधों को बढ़ाने के उपाय करना ऐसी जीवन शैली का अभिन्न अंग होता है भारत की अग्रणी भागीदारी के साथ पूरा विश्व समुदाय ऐसे जीवन शैली अपनाने के लिए आगे बढ़े यही भारत का विश्वव्यापी प्रयास है आजकल हमारे देश जी ट्वेंटी के अध्यक्षों के रूप में भी अनेक क्षेत्रों में अंतर्राष्ट्रीय नेतृत्व प्रदान कर रहे हैं बहुत से लोगों को ये जानकारी होगी कि जी ट्वेंटी के देशों के विश्व के कुल जीडीपी में 85 परसेंट और इंटरनेशनल ट्रेड में 75 परसेंट योगदान रहता है साथ ही विश्व की 60 परसेंट पॉपुलेशन भी जी ट्वेंटी के देशों में निवास करती है जी ट्वेंटी की अध्यक्षता के दौरान भारत ने वसुधैव कुटुम्बकों के आदर्श के अनुसार वन अर्थ वन फैमिली वन फ्यूचर के थीम को अपनाया है तथा हम इसे विश्व पटल पर प्रसारित भी कर रहे हैं देवियों और स्वजनों सभी देशवासियों को विकास का प्रचुर अवसर प्रदान करते हुए क्लाइमेट चेंज की चुनौती का सामना करने के लिए देश की सरकार और जनता द्वारा ऊर्जा के सक्षम उत्पादन उपयोग और संरक्षण पर जोर दिया जा रहा है इन प्रयासों को समग्र रूप से आगे बढ़ाने के लिए मैं भारत सरकार के विद्युत मंत्रालय के मार्गदर्शन में ब्यूरो ऑफ एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी के विभिन्न कार्यकलापों की सराहना करती हूँ इस संदर्भ में एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी इनोवेशन पर विशेष ध्यान देने की भी मैं सराहना करती हूँ मैं नेशनल एनर्जी एफिशिएंसी इनोवेशन अवार्ड्स के विजेताओं की नई सोच और कार्य पद्धति के लिए उनकी प्रशंसा करती हूँ मैं चाहती हूँ कि पुरस्कृत किए गए इनोवेशन का व्यापक स्तर पर उपयोग किया जाए ऐसे इनोवेशन से प्रेरित होकर अधिक से अधिक लोग नई नई पद्धतियाँ विकसित करेंगे जिससे पर्यावरण संरक्षण में सहायता प्राप्त होगी बायोडाइवर्सिटी सहित प्रकृति को बचाने की चिंता हम सब की सबको करनी है भारत की महान कवियत्री महादेवी वर्मा जी ने एक चिंता बड़ी मार्मिक शब्दों से किए हैं उन्होंने लिखा है आंधी आए जोर शोर से डाले टूटे है झोंकोर से उड़ा घोंसला अंडे फूटे किससे दुख की बात कहेंगी कहेगी अब ये चिड़िया कहाँ रहेगी ये चिड़िया कहाँ रहेगी हम सबको मिलकर चिड़िया के घोंसलों को बचाना है चिड़िया को बचाना है अंडे बच्चों को भी बचाना है डाली डाली को बचाना है पेड़ को भी बचाना है धरती माता के प्राकृतिक संतुलन को बचाना है अपने लिए और आने वाली पीढ़ियों के लिए मुझे प्रसन्नता है कि हमारे देश में पर्यावरण संरक्षण के संकल्प को कार्य रूप दिया जा रहा है पर्यावरण संरक्षण के प्रयासों से सभी देशवासियों को मैं पर्यावरण सेनानी मानती हूँ और सबके विजय की मंगल कामना करती हूँ आज के इस समारोह को मैं ऊर्जा संरक्षण के माध्यम से प्रकृति के संरक्षण के आह्वान के रूप में देखती हूँ 
हम सब एक संकल्प के लिए जो कुछ भी करेंगे और सौदेव प्रकृति के अनुकूल होगा कभी भी प्रतिकूल नहीं होगा प्रकृति और प्रगति के संतुलन को बनाए रखने में ही मानव कल्याण निहित है इस विचार के साथ पूरी मानवता आगे बढ़े इसी मंगल कामना के साथ अपनी वाणी को विराम देती हूँ जय हिंद जय भारत धन्यवाद Thank you Madam President for your kind words and blessings. we request all to please be seated as we will now continue the program the next set of awards will be given by honorable minister of power new and renewable energy and he will be joining us in few minutes from now <clears throat> we request all to kindly remain seated as we are about to begin with the second set of awards kindly be seated Ladies and gentlemen will now be presenting the awards to the appreciation prize winners of national painting competition and second prize winners to industries and establishments and innovators and post the award ceremony we have also planned a technical session so kindly remain remain seated and please stay with us till the end of the program we will also provide a certificate of merit so please be seated and stay with us till the end honorable minister of power new and renewable energy has joined us again a thunderous round of applause and once again welcome to you sir Honorable Minister of Power New and Renewable Energy will now be presenting the awards to the appreciation prize winners of the National Painting Competition and the second prize winners to industries establishments and innovators I request honorable ministers to kindly step forward for the award ceremony We will begin with the National Painting Competition Appreciation Awards certificates. 
In group A, may I call Ipsa Santra of class 7th from Salwan Girls Senior Secondary School, Delhi to receive the prize. Arpita Bepari from Vivekananda Kendra Vidyalay of class 7th, Andaman and Nicobar Islands to receive the prize. Kindly keep the applause going. <laughs> Kuvam Priplani of Class 7th, Somerville School, Noida, Delhi, NCR. Aditi Bardi of Class 7, Delhi Public School, Haridwar, Uttarakhand. <laughs> Sadika PM of Class 7 from St. Mary's Girls High School, Payanur, Kerala. Anshuman Bhomik of class 6 from Anand Mark School, Bishalgarh, Tripura. Aradhya Arvin Soni of class 7, Broadway International School, Surat, Gujarat. Akashi Jha of class 7th, BAPS, Swami Narayan Vidya Mandirat, Athal Dadra and Nagar Haveli. Ashwini Jadav of class 7th, Kendra Vidyalaya No. 2, Vasco da Gama, Goa. Nidhi Rani of class 7th, Acharya Kulam, Ranchi, Jharkhand. Now may I invite the recipients of Group B to take the prize. Samir Verma of Class 10th from the Aditya Birla Public School, Baloda Bazar, Chhattisgarh. Datta Guru S. Dhuri of Class 10th, M. V. Hervedkar English Medium School, Tilakwadi, Karnataka. Prachi Gujarati, class 9th, Nemish Sharanya School, Bhavnagar, Gujarat. Prajukta Acharya, class 8th, Shri Krishna Mission School, Agartala, Tripura. Sanya Sejal, class 8, Acharya Kulam, Haridwar, Uttarakhand. M. Sathwe, class 9, Sri Chaitanya Techno School, Vijayawada, Andhra Pradesh. Vaibhav Datta, Class 9, Holy Cross School, Agartala, Tripura. Ramashish Vishwakarma, Class 9, Acharya Kulam, Haridwar, Uttarakhand. Sri Lakshmi Jayaram, Class 8, Sacred Heart Girls High School, Paranaganam Jharakhand. Congratulations to all the children.
Now we will move to the prize distribution of runners up of National Energy Conservation Awards under the industry category chemical sector. The second prize is being awarded to Transpec Industry Limited from Vadodara, Gujarat. This unit has achieved thermal energy savings 7,412.87 million kilocalories and 2.84 million units in a year. Mr. Bimal Kumar Vasantlal Mehta, Managing Director, and Mr. Vipul Kumar Pradeep Bhai Parik, Senior General Manager, will receive the prize. In manufacturing sector, the second prize goes to TK Elevator India Private Limited from Pune, Maharashtra. Mr. Manish Mehan, CEO, Managing Director, and Mr. Rajendra Pawar, Manager, Maintenance and Facility, will receive the prize. In integrated steel plant sector, the second prize is being awarded to Sale Isco Steel Plant from Burnpur, West Bengal. Sri Brijendra Pratap Singh, Director in Charge, Burnpur and Durgapur Steel Plant, and Sri Akshay Kumar Maharathi, Assistant General Manager, will receive the prize. In textile sector, the second prize is being awarded to Arvind Limited Denim Business from Ahmedabad, Gujarat, Sri Harvinder Rathi, Chief Operating Officer, Projects, and Mr. Saurav Verma, Chief Manager, Engineering, will receive the prize. In sugar sector, the second prize is being awarded to Kothari Sugars and Chemicals Limited from Satha Mangalam, Tamil Nadu, Mr. Sylvester Goldwyn, Director, Mr. Palani Velarajan, General Manager, Tech, will receive the prize. In transport category among railway stations, the second prize goes to Guntakal Railway Station from South Central Railway, Sri P. D. Mishra, Principal Chief Electrical Engineer, and Sri Venkata Raman Reddy, Divisional Railway Manager, will receive the prize. Under Buildings category, for Government Building Sector, the second prize goes to BSNL Uttarakhand Telecom Circle from Indira Nagar, Dehradun. Shri Arvind Vadnekar, Director, HR. Shri Pushpendra Singh, Chief Engineer, Electrical, will receive the prize. For Colleges and University, the second prize goes to Lok Panchayat Rural Technical Training Institute from Ahmednagar, Maharashtra. Shri Prashant Bhausaheb Sahane, Principal. Shri Balu Bikaji Hase, Nodal Officer, Energy Efficiency. With this, we are done with Industries and Establishments category, National Energy Efficiency Innovation Awards 2022. Now we move on to the prize distribution of runners-up. Under Group A Industry Sector, the second prize is awarded to Center for Energy, Environment and Productivity for the project Heat Recovery. Dr. J. Nagesh Kumar, Director, is receiving the prize. Under the same group transport sector, Indian Oil Corporation Limited is awarded the second prize for their project Green Combo Solution. Dr. S. S. V. Ramakumar, Director R&D and Mr. Mukul Maheshwari, Chief General Manager. And now ladies and gentlemen, the Certificate of Merit. Indorama Ventures Oxide Ankleshwar Private Limited. Godrej and Boys Manufacturing Company Limited, Satara, Maharashtra. Mareli Motherson Automotive Lighting, India Private Limited, Pune, Maharashtra. Jugal Kishore Vanaspati Products Private Limited, Bikaner, Rajasthan.
नालवा स्टील एंड पावर लिमिटेड राजगढ़ छत्तीसगढ़ GBTL India Bhivani Haryana Orient Syntex Alwar Rajasthan Wellspun India Limited Wapi Gujarat ऑर्डिनेंस फैक्ट्री अंबज हारी नागपुर महाराष्ट्र गेल इंडिया लिमिटेड पाता उत्तर प्रदेश कैलडेरीज इंडिया रिफैक्ट्रीज लिमिटेड नागपुर महाराष्ट्र कानपुर सेंट्रल रेलवे स्टेशन नॉर्थ सेंट्रल रेलवे राजा मुंदरी रेलवे स्टेशन साउथ सेंट्रल रेलवे तेनाली रेलवे स्टेशन साउथ सेंट्रल रेलवे खान मार्केट मेट्रो स्टेशन दिल्ली मेट्रो रेलवे हॉस्पिटल गुंतकल डिवीजन साउथ सेंट्रल रेलवे आंध्र प्रदेश इलेक्ट्रिक ट्रैक्शन ट्रेनिंग सेंटर विजयवाड़ा साउथ सेंट्रल रेलवे आंध्र प्रदेश डिविजनल रेलवे हॉस्पिटल प्रतापनगर वेस्टर्न रेलवे गुजरात एमिटी इंटरनेशनल स्कूल सेक्टर 46 गुरुग्राम हरियाणा राजस्थान रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड तेलंगाना स्टेट रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी डेवलपमेंट कॉर्पोरेशन लिमिटेड एफेको हीटिंग सिस्टम्स प्रोजेक्ट एल्यूमिनियम होल्डिंग फर्नेस एल थर्मोस विक्रम साराभाई स्पेस सेंटर इसरो प्रोजेक्ट सुपर कैपेसिटर फॉर स्पेस ट्रांसपोर्टेशन Thank you very much honorable dignitaries for the award ceremony you may please be seated thank you very much ladies and gentlemen we will now move to the next session on emerging new technologies in energy efficiency this session will have presentations from leading industries in showcasing their technology adoption and saving energy Now I request Director General BEE Shri Abhay Bakre 
to deliver a presentation on the overview of the perform achieve and trade scheme and moderate the session bahut bahut dhanyawad good afternoon all the industry champions ladies and gentlemen uh, now we will have uh, technical discussions and of course uh, the kind of technologies which have been deployed by different industries and demonstrated a huge savings under the pat scheme and all other sectors we will be having a short presentation from these champions so that we can replicate them in rest of the countries and the rest of the industry units uh, the pat scheme as most of you are aware is one of the biggest scheme in the world anywhere in the world it it includes almost 50% of our consumption in the country more than 310 million ton of oil equivalent uh, it started uh, with 400 uh, industrial units now we have already uh, reached to 1196 so let's have a small film on how this pat scheme has been uh, uh, evolved and how the, what was the journey before we proceed further yeah can i have the video There's a battle raging out there. The battle is against the fury of nature. The wrath of elements, the violence of climate change. Like the rest of the world, India too has stepped up to play a decisive role in this do or die battle. Initiated by the Ministry of Power and the Bureau of Energy Efficiency, National Mission for Enhanced Energy Efficiency was drawn up to enhance energy efficiency in all energy intensive sectors. An innovative cyclic and market based mechanism called Perform, Achieve and Trade or PAT scheme was introduced to evolve a methodology for qualifying energy savings and enable industries to trade those savings via energy saving certificates or e-certs. The first patch cycle ended in 2015 and covered 478 industrial units across eight sectors resulting in emission reductions of around 31 million tons of carbon dioxide. After the successful completion of patch cycle 1 with eight sectors BEE extended the patch scheme to three new sectors petroleum refineries electricity distribution companies and Indian railways. Cycle 2 commenced on 1st April 2016 and was completed on 31st March 2019. It resulted in total energy savings of 14.08 million tons of oil equivalent, exceeding the target by 16%. The reduction in energy emissions stood at 66.01 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. In monetary terms, This translated into savings of 31,445 crore rupees against an investment of 43,721 crore rupees. The PAT cycle 2 outcomes underline the fact that when the vision, objectives, targets and performance are perfectly aligned, large energy intensive sectors can indeed make significant reductions in energy consumption and carbon emissions. The quest for the creation of a green nation is an uphill task but with proactive planning and dedicated performance energy efficiency and reduced emissions can be achieved step by step little by little india fighting back and standing strong in the battle against climate change so as this pat scheme has been growing every year and now we are in the pat cycle 7 we have reached almost 1200 units from the country just to inform you that most of the uh, aspects of our pat schemes have been now replicated by many other countries they have come here they have also understood the the, the legal framework the procedure the verification protocol and now they have implemented in their countries we are uh, moving further by including new sectors we included petrochemicals we included uh, hotels that is under buildings we are in the process of including airports airport buildings we have recently included sugar uh, chemicals glass ceramics and of course the non ferrous metal 
So we are going to have the complete uh, uh, achievement from the demand side in the industry sector, almost more than 300 million tonne of CO2 by 2030, to reach our 45 percent emission increase target from the industry sector. This will be followed by other sectors like buildings and transport. Now, <coughs> all these things will be needed by involving and implementing new technologies. And here we are going to have the champions who have actually demonstrated these new technologies. And under the guidance of Ministry of Power, the Bureau has set up sectoral advisory groups. We are also trying to involve international experts so that they can tell us about the new technologies. And of course, we would like to get this, those technologies in India and we can replicate and deploy in most of the units in India so that we can achieve energy savings. We can also achieve carbon reduction. Now, uh, without further thing, we are going to have uh, six presentation from those units who have deployed niche technologies and thereafter we will have a question and answer from the audience and from the industries here. So let me invite the first presentation uh, from Steel Authority of India Limited, Sri B.P. Pandey, AGM, Royal Kerala Street Plant. Kindly make your presentation about the technologies and the savings achieved. Thank you. Good, good afternoon. We request all of you to please settle down and maintain silence. Then only we will be able to understand the presentation. There are people moving and still standing. Aap sabhi se request hai ki kripe apne saan grahan karein. Sab baith jayein. Thanyavad. So good afternoon. The respected uh, dignitaries on the dais and industry leaders, children and participants, we are honored to receive a National Energy Conservation Award first prize in iron and steel uh, category, integrated iron and steel category. Despite advances in efficiency and sustainability, the energy created since industrial revolution more than half has been consumed in last two decades. So we at Raurkela Steel Plant committed to meet the national aspiration. So our capacity in phase one, this plant was established in 1959 with the 1 million ton capacity. Then it was further enhanced to 1.9 million ton and thereafter it is 4.2 million ton capacity. We are, hap we are, we are proud to provide the steel for defense services uh, and uh, like INS Bikrant. Okay, right. Okay. Our energy consumption, our energy, specific energy consumption, has, uh, there is a drastic reduction in energy consumption. So this was uh, mainly because of uh, increase, one part, increase in volume production and the second part, the opti optimization, optimization of energy uses and certain innovations also we have done in our optimization of energy. We have done the de-bottle making. Mainly the boiler coal consumption has been reduced drastically by the optimization of energy usage. You can see in the uh, presentation the boiler coal. Uh, we have captive power plant where we use uh, the boiler coal. So it was around 1,70,000 tons of per year. It has reduced to around 23,000 per year tons per year. Next. Okay. Then again, uh, we have the uh, top pressure recovery turbines in our blast furnaces. This is the waste heat utilization. So it was designed to produce around 14 megawatt power. But on average, average basis, we have slowly, it is increasing. And from 11.33 megawatt, we have went up to 13.45. And this year, we are achieving 15 megawatt. And this is the best TRT running in India. In specific power consumption front also, we have reduced. There is a drastic reduce in specific power consumption too. And uh, we are hovering around 480, 489, 486 uh, kilowatt per ton of crude steel. Now, next. So uh, this was the thermal energy saving, so details. Next. Right. See, electrical energy saving, we have done co-generation, we have increased. Uh, Especially coal generation, we make around 80 megawatt, 70 to 80 megawatt 
co generation we produce next so what project we have done uh, there we have actually in uh, tit generation it is a 14 megawatt design but generator was of uh, 20 megawatt so what we have next slide next slide yeah so if you can see after blast furnace there is a trt and trt uh, there are uh, bypass system so bypass used to remain open 7 to 10 percent every time so what we thought uh, let us uh, the constraint was the transformer transformer was of 20 mva only our however generator was of uh, 20 megawatt so what we did is we replaced the transformer of 25 mva and the power enhance there was a power enhancement which was restricted to 14.3 it has uh, gone up to 17.2 on an average we are getting 15 megawatt of power this was the huge saving uh, we have done this is purely the process optimization optimization uh, saving potential is more in every industry we can uh, search of that everywhere okay next okay right next what we have done in uh, our uh, okay this is the saving details what we have done so on an average last year we achieved 0.5 megawatt on uh, 8760 hour basis but uh, uh, hourly daily basis it goes to 17 megawatt too okay next so second modification what we have done is uh, i'm trying next yeah second modification actually our expansion project if you can see uh, from the blast furnaces there are by product gas it is distributed to batteries and the old system what we have in batteries what we had a problem of uh, pressure under firing we call it heating system under firing pressure so after uh, exhaustive survey we find that there is a uh, there is a flaw in flow element so we one by one flow elements there were three flow elements one by one uh, we have redesigned and replaced the flow element it was orifice pr practically and then what we see ki there was a pressure increase in battery and so that the flare stack the flare stack of the blast furnace that set point also we have increased earlier it was maintaining less due to this issue sudden fluctuation in the uh, great pressure of the blast furnace so by this modification in flow element what we saving was around 70 60 to 70000 tenm cube per hour bf gas availability which has enhanced our power generation co generation up to 60 to 70 70 megawatt so this was the sea change in our system there was a drastic reduce in energy and you have seen the coal consumption boiler coal consumption has drastically reduced not only that the process also fluctuation in the pressure it uh, it hampers the and the boiler side if pressure is hamper, uh, fluctuating the boiler operation is difficult that also ease of doing ease of operating boiler also it has helped okay next so these are the benefit uh, is explained to it in sequence wise next yes if you can see the green side the, there there is a boiler coal consumption drop around 23000 uh, we have uh, uh, reached it used to be 170000 tons okay next uh, yeah so uh, then the small modifications we have done in our uh, cooling pump site actually this uh, water used to come uh, there is a closed cooling water circuit so it used to come to hot well pump then it used to go to uh, cooling tower then further uh, cold well then uh, again to supply so what we saw is if we bypass the hot well then also the cooling tower is getting enough pressure there is no issue so we have bypassed it and we have uh, saved around uh, 370 350 kilowatt power okay next so future uh, what we are going to conserve the uh, energy i mean energy conservation project installation of trt we have uh, three blast furnaces so blast furnace number 1 is new we are going to install 4 megawatt uh, trtc here top pressure recovery turbine then uh, 2 million tons of pellet plant it improves the productivity of uh, blast furnaces then uh, cdq coal dry quenching technology battery we have already one battery we have battery 6 battery 7 we are going to install then further upgradation of the we have the one coal rolling mill we are upgrading the uh, total electrical system for the saving then we have upgraded our uh, turbo alternator also next initiative taken for renewable energy 10 megawatt hydro power 
will be installed. We have one dam called Mandira, Mandira Dam, a huge water reservoir. That water we will use to produce around 10 megawatt. And the feasibility in the same Mandira Dam, we have uh, done a feasibility study, and there is a potential of producing 100 megawatt of renewable power. Right? Okay, next. Thank you. Thank you very much. Once again, thank you. We are honored to receive the National Energy Conservation Award. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Pandey. Uh, now we'll request uh, Tata Steel, uh, Sri Ankon Mitra, Head Regulatory Affairs. Yeah, kindly uh, tell us about the main technologies in about three minutes. Yeah, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Honorable dignitaries on the dais, of the dais, ladies and gentlemen, it's a proud privilege for me to present on behalf of Tata Steel at the, before this August gathering. So we thought that we'll present our sustainability journey in brief, uh, which is intertwined in the concept of energy efficiency and resource efficiency, along with decarbonization. So we value ourselves and we want to be the global steel industry benchmark uh, as far as value creation and corporate citizenship is concerned. And that is why we have a full framework uh, driving sustainability and decarbonization going forward. Next slide, please. So on our decarbonization journey, which we have started around a couple of decades back uh, with energy efficiency levers, the key enablers that have been the adoption of best available techniques, and over the years you can see from somewhere around 4.7 million ton and somewhere around three tons of carbon dioxide per ton of crude steel, we have now come down well below 2.5 and we want to achieve below two uh, by the year 2025. Next slide, please. We have uh, distributed our journey uh, across three horizons, and by 2045, our group chairman has announced that Tata Group will be a net zero group. As part of that, by 2025, we have already said that we'll reach below two. By 2030, we'll be below 1.8, and in the horizon, 30 to 45, we'll try to attain net zero. And these are contingent to certain actions certain policy actions from the government which we have listed and with the uh, announcement of the national ca carbon market we are enthused that these will be now facilitated and fast-tracked. Coming specifically to our energy efficiency drive, we started off uh, as I told a couple of decades back with higher uh, resource efficiency wherein we tried to Im improve the quality of our raw materials because raw material quality is an important lever for resource and energy efficiency. And through that, next please. We enriched the low grade raw materials available in India, be it iron ore, and in the next slide on coal, where we brought down the domestic coal ash content from over 30% to below 15%, and that is what we have been charging in our blast furnaces and deriving uh, higher energy efficiency through processes listed in the next slide. This is our ener energy adoption chart, wherein from the 80s to 2011 and 2011 to 2020, we have adopted different technologies which have already been talked about in the video from Bureau of Energy Efficiency and from sale like TRT, CDQ, etc. Next slide, please. Next, please. These are the savings that we have got as far as the packed cycle is concerned. The Tata Steel Group has uh, many designated consumers. We pride ourselves for the Jamshedpur Steel Plant, which has got one of the highest certificates as part of PAT1 and PAT2 cycles. From the uh, certificates uh, we got in PAT1 cycle, uh, we have banked some, but we have already traded around 22,000 certificates, and which has given us returns of more than three crore rupees. Next, please. The PAT cycles that we have been part of uh, has sort of 
facilitated adoption of uh, energy improvement technologies and we have sort of charted out with PAT and without PAT payback periods for the technologies that we have implemented and we can clearly see that PAT has not only facilitated but fast-tracked energy uh, conservation and energy efficiency in the country. With the passage of the Energy Conservation Amendment Bill and with the launch of the National Carbon Markets, uh, we see that there's a very good future for energy efficiency and uh, we want to use the carbon market to attain the net zero goal that our chairman has given. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Mitra. Uh, from now we move on to the cement sector. And uh, as most of you are aware, now we have the best cement plants in the world. So may I invite uh, Amboja Cement, Sri Balvinder Singh, DGM head. Yeah, kindly uh, tell us about the main technologies in next uh, three minutes. Good afternoon, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank B for giving us such an opportunity. So, Ambuja Cement Limited, uh, Rupert, which is part of now Odani Cement. So, I'll just highlight few points. Or uh, under the guidance of uh, uh, B, under the pad circle, which we have done uh, savings. So, moving ahead, please. Uh, this is a small slide where you can see step by step how we have uh, not only increased our capacity, but along with that, uh, the actions have been uh, taken to optimize power. And there is a quite handsome reduction in energy consumption, which we'll see, see in uh, next slides. Next, please. So this is a small brief history. Uh, I would like to point out that uh, one of the uh, major achievement uh, of Ambuja Cement Limited Roper, that is we are having a thermal power plant, and we are using more than 50% our uh, by heat, the uh, power generation is with the help of agriculture waste. The biomass which we are uh, receiving from nearby sources, we are using that for uh, uh, producing electricity. And the same electricity is being used in our cement plant for uh, grinding. So that is a big achievement which we are presently having. Uh, moving ahead, sir. So this is PAT cycle. Uh, you can see the achievement from uh, 0.134. Presently, we are at 0.0134 TOE, uh, but we started with 0.0201. So there is a saving of almost 33%, which we have uh, achieved from 2015 till now. And we are again, or uh, we are uh, likewise, this we are again ahead on this path. Moving next, sir. Uh, so uh, these are some of the benefits which uh, I would say the. Uh, we are thankful to the BE team that we have been considered under the PAT cycle and because under the guidance of uh, BE only we have been able to organize such meetings and organize such points or we can say analyze ourselves to take out the points where we can save energy. So uh, you can read in these slides that most of the actions which were related to big motors like we have uh, replaced our motors uh, with VFDs, we have installed VFDs, then we have high efficiency equipments, operational optimization was also done to achieve the energy uh, reduction in energy consumption. Next, sir. Uh, this slide is basically to showcase uh, from uh, our journey from 2017 till now. So you can see that uh, almost 35 big ideas, these are only the big ideas which have come under the PAT cycle. So uh, there is an investment of 3 crores, but uh, there is a saving of 9 crores. So we are again thankful to be that uh, with, the, with their guidance under their umbrella, we have been uh, you know, uh, pinpointing the areas where we can uh, say, actually save energy. Next, please. Uh, these are some of the steps. So like in the first one, you can see the grinding efficiency cement wheel 4 by uh, optimizing grinding media. So in uh, our grinding process in cement, it is basically having ball mills. So we have optimized the grinding media, the pattern of the grinding media, what type of grinding media in it we can use so that uh, we can reduce energy. Similarly, uh, in mill one, by optimizing again grinding media, which is a major consumer in our industry, uh, ball mill. So we have uh, optimized how, uh, with the help of different raw material, we have to use what type of media. So on the basis of that, we have been able to reduce energy. Moving ahead, sir. Again, these are some of the points uh, which are visible here. Um, uh, again, I had, sir. These are some, again, points where we have, uh, we have elaborated how we have uh, reduced the energy. 
So here I would like to point out that in one of the mill there was a, a NEI of 93 and it was most efficient mill. So we were able to you know, pinpoint that and after that we worked on it and we have been able to increase the NEI to 95% which has given us a lot of saving. Moving next to sir. This is again related to boilers because we are having a uh, captive power plant inside as I have told before. So some actions were taken in boiler also. Then uh, there is one another area uh, which is related to cement grinding that is fly ash. So fly ash uh, there was scarcity then we moved on to drying of the fly ash which can be easily used uh, in the cement because that fly ash uh, actually uh, you can say it replaces the clinker which is uh, consuming a lot of coal for production and with the help of that we have been able to reduce the carbon emission also along with energy consumption. Next sir. So this, this was a brief which I have told about fly ash dryer. Next sir. Uh, this, this is a picture of the energy saving uh, though from 36 kWh per ton of cement we have moved to 33 and there is a huge saving in that. Next sir. Then again uh, uh, being ahead on this path we are now in the process to install a, a vertical roller uh, mill. Uh, so there is a proposal for that and it's actually related to energy consumption only because it's a new technology and we are ready to invest more than 500 crores for this project. Next. Thanks a lot. So another uh, plant, Prism Cement, uh, Sri O.P. Verma. Western White President, yeah, kindly limit your about main points up to within three minutes. Uh, Namaskar, uh, respected uh, dignities on dais. Uh, first of all, I thank you to be for giving us this opportunity to share the actually what cement sector is doing for saving of energy and uh, a step for green cement manufacturing. Next slide, please. Sir, our plant was established first unit in 1997, second is in 2011 and if you put together our clinker capacity is 4.2 and 5.6 clinker and cement, sir. Actually now looking to the time constraints, I directly take you to the pet cycle. Actually B, he has introduced a pet cycle first in 2012 and 15. So that our baseline was given to us that is 783 and target was given to us 749. So we have focused our process area basically to how do we get this target. So we have changed our process and bring down our clinker factor. That is a major factor to reduce the you know energy consumption in the cement sector. And we have increased our flyest percentage. And you can see in the figure slides, it is a self explanatory I'm not going to read the individual data. And we have reduced our uh, specific thermal energy consumption from eight. Uh, 062770 so and uh, uh, substantially also reduce the specific power consumption next slide please so you can see here these are the other area we have reduced the energy in terms of thermal and electrical power consumption both and you can see we have achieved the target not only the target we have achieved our figures below the target they were 738 and you can see we have earned 3700 e by the BE and which is equivalent to 52 million ton of CO2 we have saved in pet cycle of one from one unit, sir. Now go to the next slide, please. Now you can see the second cycle, sir, that is implemented again on our unit one. And here also you can see the baseline was given to us 732 and target was 697. Again, we have done the process optimization further. And you can see the clinker factor point 672, we have reduced to 0.64. And further, we have increased the fly ash percentage, sir. And you can see locally consumption, what we have uh, achieved 770, further bring down to 751, and a specific power consumption also reduced. Next slide, please. The other uh, area, again, we have focused for the energy consumption and thermal energy consumption. And you can see we have achieved the target, not only achieved, and also reduced the, uh, our, uh, we achieved 692 again 697, and which results are gaining up e of 1515, and saving of 47 million ton CO2 we have saved another this 2016 to 2009 period. Next slide. Now sir, pet cycle T3 was imposed on us for unit 2. The period was 2017 to 2020. And you can see the same principally we have optimized the second unit and we have reduced our clinker factor from 6.8 to 
0.65 and increase the fly ash percentage. And one more thing I would like to add here, sir. Actually, sir, normally cement plant was run on the coal-based applications. So we have introduced the pet Q cases in our plant as well as move toward the alternative fuels. That step already we have taken in the 2017 and you can see in the slide that we have added and further we have reduced 860 kilocalorie specific thermal energy consumption to 752 kilocalorie and also reduced the specific water consumption. So you can see by saving electrical and thermal energy we have achieved the target 707 much below that is 679 against the target and save the uh, CO2 of 87 million ton of CO2 and earned 9,492 ESERTs. Now, this is a sir, latest cycle uh, 7, which is under progress, that is the uh, period is 2022 to 2025, and baseline is given for unit 1 is 684, target is given to 661, and the unit 2, 718 and 691. So we have a very clear roadmap to how to achieve it, sir. Next slide, please. So these are the roadmaps. See, we are going to implement a solar power, pl uh, power plant in our unit. We are going to have a bend. We are going for a high uses of VFR and increase of fly ash percentage. And we are confident enough to achieve this target. Next slide, please, sir. Sir, here I would like to share that already we have installed 30.4 megawatt plant as a CPP in our own land. So this is our initiative we have taken in our plant. And now 24 megawatt bend is under execution which is going to be commissioned in 2023. And we are also taking a power made a open access uh, arrangement 5.5, that is biomass based power plant. So that we are taking, making our power greener and greener, sir. And 22.5 megawatt plant, WHR is already in operation. Sir, you can see almost 105 acre land we have used to install this 34.4 megawatt solar power plant. That is in our mined out area. So most of the cement plant, this kind of land is already available. Next slide. This is the WHRS already in operation since 2021. Next slide, please. So, sir, you can see our journey towards the green energy adoption. See, in 2018 and 19, there was no RE power with us, but we have already achieved uh, by this end year 37 percent of. Uh, our power requirement we have already replaced with the green power and by 24-25 it will be 52 percent. Clear road map is with us, sir. Next slide. So if you put all pet cycle together, sir, so far you can see the trend from unit 1 783 to 621 we have achieved for unit 1 and unit 2 746 to 631 we have achieved and which is resulted as the saving of carbon uh, CO2 emission 185 million ton from our only plant. And ESATs we have already received 14707 and you can see the total kilocalorie after PET cycle assessment we are going to receive figures are in front of you sir. So that is the uh, uh, our achievement by PET cycle 1, 2, 3 and 5th. And these are the benefit of uh, B pet cycles. This is known to everyone, so I will not read out it as individual things. It is because we are already uh, discussing about it. Next slide, please, sir. And this is our final roadmap plan by the management because the, our nation is going for the net zero emission norms. So that everywhere discussion is on. So we have also made out the, our roadmap plan. So by 24, 25, total CO2 emission per, from our plant we are going to reduce by 16 percent, 29-30 it will be 30 percent. Of course, to achieve this figure, we have to modify our cement process technology also that we are already evaluating. And 34-35, uh, uh, we are going to reduce 40 percent CO2 emissions. Of course, there will be some alternative fuels. We have to go for some maybe disruptive technology like hydrogen uses in the cement plant or something like that. So that already we are under discussions. And we have already a uh, very close discussion with IIT BHU because they are doing a lot of R&D for the nation. So we have got associated with them to how to use hydrogen in the cement industry. So that is another step we are taking for forward and by the end of 44-45 we will be carbon neutral. So that is our mission, sir, uh, for the uh, nations and making our cement more greener to greener. At the end, uh, I would like to thank Honorable Minister uh, Power and Renewable Energy uh, things up because they have already launched a uh, uh, energy conservation next on 12th. So we are behind that. So we'll do that, sir. Thank you very much, sir.
Thank you, Mr. Verma. Uh, moving on to another important sector is uh, aluminum sector. Uh, Bharat Aluminum. May I invite Mr. Avinash Chavan? Yeah, kindly uh, talk about the technologies, please. Yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, dignitaries. Uh, about that aluminum sector, that uh, Bharat Aluminum Company Limited, located at uh, center, center of India, Chhattisgarh, having ca capacity of 5.7 lakh ton per annum and 2,000 megawatt cap bulk generation capacity. Next slide, please. This is our journey for energy conservation. We have re significantly reduced our specific energy consumption from 59 to 50 gigajoule per metric ton of production, which is uh, about 15% reduction. And uh, this is our summary of Pad Cycle 1 and 2. We achieved 22,000 ESATs in Pad Cycle 1 and more than 4 lakh ESATs in Pad Cycle 2. These are the list of some major projects uh, which are in under, undergone through all these financial years. And we sh save around 74 million units of energy saving during these financial years. Last. These are the some major projects which was carried out in power plant, which has impact overall approximate uh, 40 kilocalorie in unit heat rate reduction. Next slide, please. These are the some pictorious presentation of all these projects. Next slide, please, sir. This is the calc that uh, saving potential, which we have achieved around 28,000 28, uh, coal consumption reduction in a year. This is the another project by which we able to reduce our uh, PA header pressure, significantly reduce our uh, power saving by 6.5 million units per units per year. Next, this is one mo more project in the APH. We have reduced our uh, uh, boiler exit fuel temperature by 14, 12 degrees Celsius, which will imp imp have impact on boiler efficiency by one percent around. Next slide. This is the saving outcome from that project. This one is another project. Uh, we have uh, done interconnection in uh, our uh, units of uh, cooling water lines. Uh, we take advantage during weather, uh, favorable weather condition, also in part load condition. This is also save around 730 kilowatt of uh, energy reduction in that. These are the major con energy conservation project in metal area, uh, around 380 million units uh, saving is uh, saved during the last several years. Uh, one of the project is pot control upgradation through which uh, process optimization and controller optimization we are able to uh, save two, 220 kilowatt per metric ton at specific energy, energy consumption. Next please. This is the 100% refrigeration product by which we can which we can save around 500 kilowatt hour per, per metric ton of energy consumption. So these are the project in line right now from uh, the, during this financial year and next financial year. Sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Avinash. Uh, we will have last two presentation. Uh, uh, the textile group, uh, the welcome well spun group from textile sector, yeah. Mr. Sanjay Kanungo. Can you tell us about the technologies? Uh -huh. Namaste, sir. Uh, I am from Wellspun India Limited and uh, uh, respected dignitaries on dais, Shri R.K. Singh, sir, Krishna Bal, sir, Alok, sir, and senior officials. Wellspun is uh, the uh, biggest uh, company, largest uh, towel manufacturing and sheet manufacturing company in India. And every fourth towel sold in uh, USA is made by Wellspun. And every eighth bed sheet sold in USA is made by Wellspun. And even for FIFA World Cup and Wimbledon, whatever the towels are being used are being manufactured by the Wellspun only. So uh, here, uh, Based on, uh, thank you very much to Bureau of uh, Energy Efficiency and Power of uh, Ministry. Uh, based on our, this audit of PAT, in last uh, five years, we have reduced our energy consumption by 20%. And uh, per ton of uh, uh, coal uh, equivalent also has been reduced by 20%. Next. And with that, uh, we could have a saving of around 26.82 crore rupees per annum and uh, uh, equivalent coal, a ton of coal is 50,653. Next. 
we have uh, done various initiatives uh, in order to uh, have energy efficiency uh, initiatives and lot many things are there and every, every small thing we are taking care so that we are the most energy efficient company uh, globally in textile sector. So there are, these are all the various initiatives and with the, this help we could save around 25,000 uh, uh, metric ton of coal per annum with a power saving of uh, five, uh, 54 lakh 96,000 uh, units per annum. And uh, here we had investment of 8 crore rupees where uh, we could uh, get saving of 26.92 crore rupees with the, all these initiatives. Here uh, some examples are there. We have uh, modified our turbine. So earlier uh, we were getting 10.5 uh, uh, megawatt of power and now we are getting after modification of the turbine 12.45 uh, uh, megawatt of the power which is uh, annual saving of 8.6 uh, crore rupees and with the same amount of coal we could generate approximately 2.5 megawatt of power more. Next. Here, uh, every drop of water, every drop, uh, drop of uh, steam, and every uh, every single CFM of air we are uh, using, and every drop of uh, steam is being recycled, and every uh, hot water uh, is being recycled within the company itself. So this is a fresh uh, flash and condensate heat recovery system, with, which is helping us to save 3.52 crore rupees per annum for our uh, this compressor heat recovery system and flash heat recovery system. Next. This is again a heat recovery system for uh, effluent treatment plant and uh, with this we saved energy uh, in terms of coal, we can, I can, if I talk then 7.46 uh, metric tons uh, of uh, coal per day equivalent to 2.39 crores uh, of uh, saving per annum. Next. Here uh, uh, you can say, uh, as I told that air is also uh, sustainable, uh, important for sustainability. So we modified air nozzles because in looms, uh, air jet looms, air is very important factor. And we have modi uh, used modified uh, uh, nozzles as well as reeds, which is helping us to save 19% uh, of the energy and which is equivalent to uh, uh, 7 point uh, energy uh, tariff of 7.5 lakh per annum as well as uh, uh, per annum if I talk then uh, 2.4 CR. Next. And now we are having a, uh, excellent heat recovery condensate uh, system which is uh, uh, saving us uh, around uh, uh, 9,000 uh, 9, and in terms of lakh, lakh rupees this is 1.41 CR uh, rupees. So everything whatever we are uh, saving we are calculating in terms of money as well as in terms of uh, units also. Next. So every single uh, wastage in terms of uh, uh, energy saving. Uh, all the wastage, cotton waste we were uh, earlier uh, this uh, sending for landfilling as well as all the leaves, leaves also was being uh, mad ga garbage. But now all the leaves and every waste which is being converted into la uh, pallets you can see here. And all these uh, things are being used as a fuel for the boiler and this is saving us around uh, uh, 1.32 CR uh, per annum. So you can say that every wa waste is being recycled here. Next. For uh, likewise, we are having uh, uh, air uh, dryer system also, which is on glycol base instead of uh, conventional, and this is also giving us uh, 920 units per day. And if I talk about then 24 lakhs uh, rupees per annum. Similarly, we are having pumps, so always not required to have same R RPM throughout uh, for every dying cycle. So we have reduced cycle time also as well as uh, RPM also. So wherever it is required, whatever the RPM, we are doing it. So this is again uh, one of the measure. So next. Also we have developed a cool dying system, innovated and recycling of the water. You can see we are recycling the uh, water here, which is uh, uh, saving approximately uh, 1.61 uh, lakhs per next. And here VFD we are using, so none of the motor or drive is without VFD in our organization now. And this is the recycling of the water as well as chemicals in order to have uh, ESG, environmental sustainable governance. And we are the number one ESG company globally in textile sectors. Thank you. And thank you very much uh, Bureau of Energy Efficiency and Power Ministry for giving us opportunity and award. Thank you. Thank you Mr. Kanungu. Uh, we have last presentation from uh, NTPC, CTM Department, Mr. Subramanian. So this is regarding the power plant, I think.
honorable ministers and distinguished guests. A very happy Energy Conservation Day once again. I'm from NTPC. And uh, a small bit from our, uh, this thing, our activities, we are committed to achieve energy efficiency in line with the GOI. And NDBC began its journey, and we opened efficiency departments in the year 1995 itself. And subsequently, we uh, opened departments like Center for Power Efficiency and uh, Energy uh, Environment Protection, and CTEM. And uh, now coming to energy, we were conducting energy audits since 19, uh, 1999 with the help of NPC. And renovation and modifications we are taking and taking up in, uh, I mean, to safeguard energy efficiency as well as the capacity of the units. And uh, we have online energy management system is a part of processing, uh, I mean, processing in control rooms. This is one aspect. Actually, this, all the OLEMS tags have been, uh, along with the DCS tags, we, we, are, we can able to see in our control room on the monitors. And design modifications is VFD drives. We have done audits for the energy conservation to test and to find out the energy conservation aspects. And these audits were conducted across all the stations in the year uh, 2009 and 10 itself. And energy efficient lighting, that's the, we are committed to the LED conversion and we have done to the maximum extent. And journey towards better green tomorrows, environment protection, we are. Uh, energy, uh, while doing energy conservation, the environment is taken care of fully. And this is a screen of OLEMS where the units can be the parameters of energy uh, consumption index can be seen on a single monitor and it can be compared among the units and system wise as well as like in the, uh, if, if he's able to see this, I mean the systems in a uh, particular unit the condensate system, the draft system, uh, such systems can be monitored and any deviation, these deviations can be decided upon for uh, engineering declaration towards overall and bring back the unit to the original capacity as well as to maintain the sustenance towards energy conservation. Next please. And this is, this is the major, the, out of the audits, we found out the major uh, possible things or two things, that is ID fan, uh, uh, VFD for ID fans, that is uh, more, uh, mostly the units which, ca which have come uh, before 2010 or so, actually the 500 megawatt units. And uh, these units, the, uh, the, uh, the voltage source inverters are used in this. Actually, this is the latest technology. The existing fans are ID fans with white, I mean, that uh, uh, white couplings. These can be could be retrofit with VSI. That is the latest technology. The ID fans uh, of induction motor need not be changed because the, the cost intensity is very high. The ID fans cost, the motors cost around two to three crores actually for, the, for a unit in a 500 megawatt unit. Whereas with this technology, the motors, I mean these uh, ID fans can be retrofitted with the VFDs and the saving would be around 600 to 700, 750 kilowatt in 500 units and 250 to 350 kilowatt in 200 megawatt units. And similarly, we identified the highly potential area is CEPs. The CEPs also we are retrofitting with the uh, VFDs. Then coming to the LEDs, we have almost converted, uh, the conversion uh, transformation taken place for about 13 lakh units installed under this scheme. And uh, the estimated savings just because of lighting itself is around 137 million units. This is on an average 24 by 7 by 365, around 15 megawatt it comes to. And the total, in, and in addition, rooftop uh, solar we uh, initiated that so far we reached around 10 megawatt. And another procurement of another 3 megawatt is underway. Next please. And in the pockets, the units have been done with many modifications to achieve the con conservation. Uh, that is monitoring system, of course, energy consum uh, consumption on daily basis and taking maintenance intervention accordingly. And major replacement of specific energy consumption, BFP cartridges, mill uh, internals, etc., have been changed accordingly. And optimization of drives during unit shutdown, startup and RSD. This, has, this we are very keenly monitoring through our monitoring systems, modified and advanced monitoring systems. And regular energy audit, offline efficiency testing. This is, uh, we keep the unit health. 
monitoring so that our capacity and energy conservation is in sustained way. And use, uh, this is coming to the energy saving achieved by, that is uh, 21, 22, the savings other than the lighting is around 135 million units in the year 21, 22. And in the part one, 21 units, we achieved around 1,70,653 uh, ESETs. And uh, part two, out of 21 units, around level, uh, 1,19,809 ESETs were achieved. And uh, PTA, uh, part seven, we are already the improvements are in, in place, and we are definite of achieving it. And gas stations are exempted due to low generation, and TVC to surpass PAT targets given under PAT cycle 7. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, to conclude this session, may I request Honorable Minister to have concluding remarks. I'll come there. Uh, this is a new initiative where different industries they make presentation on the steps which they have taken to reduce their specific energy consumption. Now we are moving towards a new paradigm. Now that new paradigm will embrace both. It will embrace energy efficiency. It will also embrace uh, transition transition to non-fossils. And both these responsibilities will be with the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So we, we are thinking of changing their name in line in, with the increased responsibilities which we are going to give to the Bureau of Energy Efficiency. Uh, we just got a B, our B, Energy Conservation Act, Amendment Act passed by the Parliament. And uh, this will uh, increase the responsibilities of the Bureau of Energy Efficiency radically. The way forward is both. The, as we go ahead, the way forward is both. It is Transition is also a way forward as well as efficiency is also a way forward. One will not be sacrificed to the other. So while we transition, we shall still continue uh, placing emphasis on energy efficiency, on reducing specific energy consumption. That emphasis will continue. Uh, we have to decouple the in energy intensity from our uh, growth of our economy. Now, that is the decoupling. We have to decouple the increase in emissions again from the growth of our economy. Now, these are the two decouplings which we have in mind and which we are going to uh, focus on. The challenges are going to be there. I mean, right uh, up till now, the targets which we have set uh, for energy efficiency under perform achieve trade have been mild targets. Now we are aware and you are also aware that the technology has progressed and there are technologies available in the world today which will make your energy specific energy consumption and specific energy emissions, uh, em uh, specific emissions also uh, come down radically. Now we are going to push you towards adopting those technologies and uh, we have analyzed this we have found that adoption of those technologies will make you more competitive. The return on investment is also pretty, is also, you know, going to happen in just three, four years and after that is just profit and profits. So start thinking about it because we are going to make it compulsory. So the, we, uh, we have identified technologies and we, you know, the industries to which these technologies pertain, they will have to adopt those latest technologies. Otherwise, you know, the, you'll have to pay fines or you'll have to buy uh, carbon credits, uh, you know, so the, that is what is going to happen. We need to modernize. We need to modernize in order to be competitive. And we need to modernize in a way that we reduce the load on the environment. Uh, that, is, that is something which we as a country have to do. So we shall do it. We shall, we shall uh, do it. I am happy that the industry is also modernizing. I am happy that the industry has taken this up. But this has to progress forward. 
the next edition of the energy conservation awards will also uh, uh, see a change whereby we shall also recognize industries who have you know set targets for going green uh, so we will recognize those industries and we shall have them facil uh, felicitated by our president or by the prime minister so going green is uh, something which you should look at go ahead. Going green, going green is a new aspiration. So I have written to all the major industry captains, asking them to set target dates, target years for their going green. I have got replies from some industry captains. I haven't got replies from many industry captains. So I'll be writing to them again. The old way of doing business has to change. It has to change because we need, we need to make sure that. We start healing our environment. We have damaged it for long enough. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister, for your words of wisdom. Once again, a round of applause for the esteemed dignitaries present on the dais. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, with this, we conclude the National Energy Conservation Event 2022. Thank you so very much for your participation and support. And now, on behalf of Bureau of Energy Efficiency and Ministry of Power, I invite you all to please join us for lunch organized in the atrium on my left. You're also requested to kindly visit the exhibition organized at the backside. Thank you so much. Wish you all a great day ahead. <laughs>